Right. This is how I did it. And this is what you need to do. And I'll come back and I'll check on you to see whether or not you are doing it correctly. But I'm not going to do it for you. Y'all got it? And, and you'll be surprised. The more they see you uh, uh, invest yourself, the more they'll be willing to communicate to you. And every now and then they might put their hand in it too and help you do this or to, or to, or to do that. You got it, but you got to invest yourself in your own success. Somebody say it. I have to invest myself in my own success. That was pretty good, right? So Joshua had his father to pour into his life. He had Moses to pour into his life. And he had the Lord to pour into his life. And, of course, the Lord uh, was the most important one of the three. And he will always be the most important person uh, that we need to have to pour into our lives. You got it? Uh, you have to be careful about, and I'm closing, about success. Go to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 8, I think in 18. Or is it 18 and 8? Let's see. And uh, because what the enemy will try to do when you become successful, I think it's 8 and 18. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He'll try to, he'll try to cause you. And I know this kind of stuff never enters your mind, you know, that when I get stable, when I become successful, that I'm going to forget about God. I'm going to forget about the things of God. And um, sometimes success can cause you to become so focused on your success because being focused is one of the principles that breeds success, right? A diligent man shall abound. Listen, the Bible says, and so what that means is that when you get after something, you, you focus in on it. you all in. You're not half in. You got it. Amen. You got a direction to your life. You won't be deterred, you know. And so, and, and you got to have that, but you have to be careful that you don't allow that to get out of control. Because you can get so focused on your success or being successful until you forget about God. And, and forgetting about God is not, I, di I just forgot about God. His importance in your life begins to, to you will begin to wane. Is that is a good way to say that? Yeah, he's not first place no more in your, in your life. You, you got, and that's, that's, that's real subtle, subtle. Yeah, y'all got it. But the enemy has used that, and he continues to use that on those who are not aware of of his tactics, right? Deuteronomy 8 and what? And 18. He says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Man. God knows the end from the beginning. Right? I don't care how they say, Lord, Lord Lord, we ain't going to never, and I know that's bad news, we ain't going to never forget about the Lord. Well, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Y'all, 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 y'all got, and people confess that, they testify that, they say all that kind of stuff. But as soon, sometimes, if they get to that place of stability, and they got it clicking, they got it going on, Man, they start forgetting about the law. They never denied that they were the children of God. Y'all got it. But in their actions, God said, you done forgot about me. You done forgot about me. When you were making minimum wage, I couldn't beat you to church. Now, God was first place in your, in your life. Now they want to take it up to $15 an hour. Ain't the Lord good? That ain't no money. Yeah, not from the perspective of what you want out of life. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't be grateful, you know. But I'm just, yeah, right. That You know, $15 an hour, you, you know. 
and, and, and God said, look, I done looked down through time. And, and I decided to warn them about something that he knew they were going to do. Hmm? Verse 18, this is why I am. It says, but thou shalt remember the Lord, thy God. For it is he, oh, Lord. Now, remembering the Lord don't mean I remember the Lord. No, that means you get on up, you come to the house of God, you, right, you invest yourself in the things of God, in the kingdom of God, in the house of God. Uh, 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 yeah, that's, that's what he, that, that don't mean you remember the Lord, you stop paying your tithe. And you believe in God for more. Right? But he said, thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is what? Lord, have mercy. That what? That giveth thee the power. You know, see, success will never be by your own might and by your own power. Right? If, if you acquire any degree of success, it's going to be because God gave you the power. That's why I say, I don't understand that. You know, God will give you the power to go to the job, and he won't give you power to come to church. Right, right. Yeah, you would have forgot about God. And I'm going to tell you, the way that happens, the more you put God back like that, the easier it becomes to do. The easier it becomes to do. You know, and you need to quit using me as an excuse. Pastor don't know I'm tired. You probably were tired when you went to work this morning, but you went. Mm, and worked. And God gave you the power to do that. Right? But we'll talk ourselves into, but he ain't got no more strength. God ain't got no more power left. When I clock out, the power done turned off. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Y'all, okay. Say, is he to give thee the power to get wealth, right? Yes. That he may establish his covenant, yes. Yes. which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Y'all got it? So, so a part of your wealth is to help establish God's covenant. You know, in the earth. I, I'm creating a, a, um, a post-cross prayer for you guys. And I, I'm going to put it to some music to it and you can we're going to record it and if you want it amen you can play it in your you know just to get post prayer praying in you believe thanking God for all the things he's made available for you in Christ Jesus y'all got it and at the end of that prayer as I was kind of wrapping it up the other day the Lord and I put in there about believing for all of these things that God the manifestation of all of these things that God has said he's already given up in Christ Jesus and the Holy Ghost had me to put in there uh Oh, hi, I'm Co-Pastor Ann Cosby, right in the Biden Word Church, and we would like to invite you to our 2017 Sisters We Must Stand Women's Conference, which will be held right here in the beautiful city of Orange Beach, Alabama, at the Caree Resort. So I would like to take this time to invite you to come. The dates are September the 14th through the 16th, 2017. That's right, so be sure to come and join us. The ladies at Rightly are already making preparation just for you to have a wonderful time in the Lord fellowshipping with other sisters in the Lord. So stay tuned, and our announcer will give you some pics from last year. So be blessed. Ladies, it's that time again. Time for the Sisters We Must Stand Women's Conference 2017. This year's conference will be held once again at the beautiful Caribe the Resort in Orange Beach, Alabama. We invite you to come join us September the 14th through the 16th at the Caribe for our wonderful time in praise, worship, and fellowship. We will have five dynamic speakers that are seeking a word just for you, woman of God. So grab your family and your friends and reserve your condo now. To register for your conference seat, call 251-433-0121 or contact your rightly representative. To receive your conference discount, you must register by August 20th. Sisters, we must stand 2017. See you there.
have just been blessed by studying the word broadcast with Apostle David Kaiser Jr. If you would like an audio or video copy of today's message, please email us at rdtwtvpros at gmail.com. Connect with us daily on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or Ustream to catch past shows, words of encouragement, special events, or join us live in the sanctuary. We're located at 760 Ermira Street in Mobile, Alabama. Our service times are Sunday school at 9.30 a.m., Sunday morning worship at 11 o'clock, and Tuesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. Join us at this same time next week for a study in the Word broadcast with Apostle David Kaiser, Jr., you be blessed. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher. We would love to have you come fellowship with us at Word of Life Community Church located at 111 South Florida Street in East Bruton, Alabama. Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school, followed by an 11 o'clock worship service, and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Power Hour Bible Study. For more information, log on to our website or call 251-456-2652 or 251-809-2887. Word of Life Learning Institute is more than just a daycare. We specialize in the overall development of your child. We utilize an accelerated Christian education curriculum that teaches your children the basics they need for a strong academic future. We provide nursery through K-5 after school care and before and after school transportation. For more information, call 251-456-2650. Word of Life Learning Institute for learning and caring. Visit KC Photography, serving the Gulf Coast for over 16 years, capturing memories that last a lifetime, families, children, graduates, weddings, and more. This month's portrait special, 33 photos for only $24.99. Get your pictures back the same day. KC Photography, 235 South Wilson Avenue, downtown Pritchard. Open on Sundays. Call today, 251-452-5200, or book online at kcphotographyandprinting.com. Hello folks, Tupelo Ron here, 7150 Airport Boulevard, Tupelo Furniture, Best Mattress and More, where we're having our year-end clearance sale. Right now we're having 60% off of our Sealy Postropedic bedding, 50% off of all sofa loves, 60% off of bedroom suits, and our Southern Motion sectionals as much as $2,000 off on the floor samples. That's at Tupelo Ron's Best Mattress and More, 7150 Airport Boulevard. Tell them Tupelo Ron sent you. Hello folks, Tupelo Ron here at Tupelo Furniture, Best Mattress and More. We're going to do something a little different here today. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the word out on the deals that we have, the different products that we handle, the great prices. We do a lot of closeouts here. We have one of a kind and some of them we'll have them three or four deep, but we carry mattresses now that we are partnered up with a company out of Nashville called Best Mattress and More then we've got like 50 mattresses on the floor. We have great prices. I, I'm going to think that we probably got one of the largest display of mattresses in the state of Alabama. And in addition to that, one of the things we have, if you buy before 2 o'clock, you can get same-day delivery. If it's after that, you can get next-day delivery. And some more of the features that we have that in 30-second spots, we never have the time to tell you is that we have free delivery here in town and we consider town like 30 miles in each direction from the store here so what that means to you is you don't have to pay 100 125 or whatever it is for any kind of deliveries it ain't free to us but it's free to you but i want to show you some of the deals we got in here come on follow me over here start with we handle beauty rest we got three different lines in here, and we picked these three on purpose. We carry the beauty rest. We carry all of theirs. We will sell a beauty rest probably 30% cheaper than anybody else in town. Now, we have our specialty mattresses that's by Sealy. I'm going to get to that in a few minutes. But any of these things like the beauty rest, the uh, 
Englander Resort Collection. We're going to sell them cheaper than anybody else in town. We do it on purpose because we can do this. We're not just a mattress store. We're a furniture store also. Now, we used to be just furniture when it was Tupelo Furniture Outlet, but now we're Tupelo Furniture Best Mattress and more. We had to do that in order to get the dealership with Best Mattress. We had to give them half of our floor to display. As you can see, we've got, uh, I don't know, mattresses just displayed. So, but we also have furniture. Come on over and show you some of them. We have over here, I'm doing this for a price thing because nowadays uh, a good night's sleep is important, but everybody's concerned about price, and they should be with the economy like it is and everything. This is the Optical by Sealy. This mattress here, these on the adjustable beds, these are the all foam, memory foam, cool gel, the works. This Optical will sell in our competitor stores when it's, it's regular $15.99. This is a twin extra long, which is half of a king bed. It takes two of them to make a king like that. Twin extra long. Okay. They're going to sell for $14.99. But when they're on sale, and by the way, I've checked our competitors, they're on sale for $12.99. We sell this mattress for $5.99. Every day, every day, not a sale. We don't have no sales. It's just every day. That's the way we do it. Come on over here and show you. This is how we do it. Here's a queen, Stearns and Foster queen. We have, uh, hey, Don, excuse me, folks. Can you give me those pictures? I want, I want y'all to get this because we got plenty of time to do this. I want you to understand how we can sell them so much cheaper. Do you have those Stearns and Foster pictures? I bet I got them on my desk. Well, what it is, we have stores in Nashville, Tennessee, and we take the floor samples. And our guys will take them off the floor, put them in the plastic, put them in the truck, bring them down here. We're talking $2,200, $3,200 mattresses that we sell for $7.99, fully warranted. Now, if you don't mind, sometimes they'll have a scuff on them, a mark or something like that. But if you don't mind a little scuff or a mark, and we can save you a couple thousand dollars, and I'm not kidding you, come in and prove me wrong. Come in here. Let me get my, I'm going to show you what we got here. Stay with me. Thank you, sir. Here's some of the prices. You don't, $21.69 for Stearns and Foster. Right here. $29.99, Stearns and Foster. All right, this is what they look like. Can you see that, John? This is like what they look like when we bring them in. They're in plastic like that. We've taken them off the floor out of Nashville, showroom floor. They change the models about every, I don't know, about every two months. Here's one of the stores that they come out of there. Beautiful store, upscale. I mean, it's not a, it's not a, a trash place. It's beautiful. But they change the models, and then we get them, and we bring them in here like this. This is a nice series mattress. This mattress right here sells in the stores in Nashville for $2,200. Now, we don't have a queen. We have a king. Now, tomorrow, this could be a Stearns and Foster because this just happens to be one of them that came in. We sell it $7.99, same as a queen, $7.99. Come right back over here. This mattress is a Stearns and Foster estate. Google that when you get a chance, guys. Google that and see what Stearns and Foster has, a state mattress. This mattress will sell for anywhere, depending on if it's in one of the Macy's department stores. Let me see. Here it is, $33.69. But it's a floor sample. May have a scuff. I couldn't find any scuffs, even though I was looking for some. I was hoping that it would have one, so I'd have an excuse. But nevertheless, it's $7.99 for that mattress every day, as long as we got it. Now, when we're out of this one, we'll put another one out here. Come on over. Check this out. Another state sold it today. Stearns and Foster. Probably a $3,000 mattress. And all you have to do is Google it. See what Stearns, Stearns and Foster sell for. This is the estate. It's the Scarborough Ultra Firm. $7.99 every day. Now, we also have cheaper mattresses. Come on back. This is the... Englander collection here. This is the resort collection. These are great mattresses. We have these on sale. Now, we don't, we don't have a sale, but if they're going to change out the mattresses and they change out the whole collection when they do, I don't, I don't know what the deal is. They change the colors on them here. I think sometimes what they're doing is they're trying to find a fabric that's cheaper than this fabric to run these. Because nowadays, you know, the trend is, Save money, save money, everything's cheaper, which is not a bad idea. But when they do that, 
they don't give these to us, but they discount them. So if you don't mind taking one off the floor, we can save you a fortune. We'll save you 50, 60 percent. Some of these mattresses sell for as high as $3,000, $4,000. You're going to get them for like $1,800. Still a lot of money, but it's a lot of mattress, you see. Also, if you're looking for just a cheap mattress, now we don't get any cheaper than this. This one in a queen. This is an all foam mattress in a queen. $399. We don't even want to sell a cheaper mattress than that. Now, I know you can buy them out there. As a matter of fact, some of the big box stores right here in town in Mobile, Alabama, where they have, you have to become a member to buy, and you pay your little fee, and, and then you go in and you buy. i tell you one of them they have. They sell a Serta bed. A lady was in here just the other day said, I could buy a Queen Serta for $369. I said, yes, you can. But you can't, and I'm going to say this for all the bedding stores in town, it ain't nothing like the one the big box sells is nothing like the bedding stores sell. They sell Serta. We, we have some Sertas that are floor samples. They have real mattresses. The ones in the big box, they buy so many, they tell Serta how many coils to put in it to dummy it down, scale it down, so you won't have it, so they can sell cheaper than the rest of us. And I don't mind saying that because I'm sick of that big box mess where everything is cheap, 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 but it's not the same thing. It's kind of like buying online. You don't know what you're getting until it gets there. Come on over and I'll show you some of the more products that we sell. All right. Half of the store is bedding, as you can see. Give them a shot of that, John. We had to do this in order to get the deals on bedding. We never had them like we have now. We've got these Stearns and Fosters, as many as, some of them, as much as $2,000 off. Now, you don't have to believe that. Come in and check us out. You will see. Now, over here, we also carry furniture. One of the, one of the lines that we carry, and what I've started doing is, we buy everything by truckloads, are either containers. So we don't have the capability to change the fabric on this sofa love right here, for instance. If you want it in a different color, we don't have it. Unless we just, it came in on that truck. Otherwise, you're going to buy this one just like it is. It'll be on the floor. It comes off the floor, same day delivery, or the next day delivery, depending on whether it's 2 o'clock. I'll give you an example. Here's a sofa love, 1549. Now it's $9.99. So I want to show you some features about this. Charles of London arm, T cushions, a little other detail here. Notice right here, don't go, you don't have to close, but anyway, under under here, this cushion is reversible. Not cheap furniture, and it's not scaled down. Look at the size of it here. This is not a tiny, cheap, uh, whatever they call it, discount store furniture. This is the real deal. This is something, when you purchase it, $9.99 sofa and love, hellos come with it. And when you purchase it, you can, you got something to be proud of. It will last. By the way, it's got a 2.0 density foam. What that means to you as a customer, the foam in there, it has a dichron wrap, two inches around it, but the foam is hard, two inches. What we do is that we take foam, like I said, it's like ice cream, it's full of air, but they take a 2.0 density foam and they make a cushion, they bake it. Well, they can do the same cushion with a 1.0. 1.5. The difference is six months later when you got it at home, everybody has got a deal on a sofa before and you get about six months down the road, cushion flat. And that's what happens when you buy cheap furniture. This is not cheap furniture, it's just price right. Come on up here and show you some stuff. Folks, let's talk about something that's dear to our heart. Sometimes when you don't have the cash on hand and you need those terms, extended terms, to get the product that you need or want at that time, that's okay. So if your credit is less than perfect, I mean like a lot less than perfect, we have a situation here where we don't need any credit. And it's not called a no credit check. It's a no credit needed program. And we can get you, we can get you financed with that with a small, the biggest down payment we've had to come up with uh, for the customers had to come up with is about $53 to get the product. And then they set you up on monthly payments. But now we also have 24 months same as cash. We do not have 17 years same as cash or whatever that is. I've heard some of these chain stores talking about. I, the other day I seen a commercial. Or I heard it. I didn't see it. It was on the radio and they said a three ninety nine sofa. Take up to 2021 to pay for it. I'm thinking $400, five years, Maybe you shouldn't buy that sofa. 
You know, I mean, that's a long time. So anyway, getting back to our program here, we have the 24 months, same as cash, and you don't have to have perfect credit. Look, today's market, a lot of people's had some problems. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just means that you got a little credit problem. You come in here, I promise you, we'll make it snow in July. I promise you on that credit deal. We are, we will get it done. We'll do our best. I promise you that. All you need is a checking account and an ID. And it's a done deal. You might need some income. But other than that, we can get you fixed up. All right, folks, back up here. Let's talk about sectionals. Sectionals now is a big part of our industry because people don't go as much. They're staying home. The economy's tougher. They're spending more time. They're ordering pizza in or watching TV. We have one of the largest selections of sectionals in town. Now, we don't just have sectionals. We have these and they're manufactured by Southern Motion. Southern Motion, one of the largest manufacturers in the U.S. Now, how we sell them cheaper than the big box, which ain't very many big box get the Southern Motion, but because they're uh, more expensive than junk. But nevertheless, what we take, we get all their closeouts. We use the closeout fabric, fully warranted. We use all their mechanisms, leg it and plat, and then we put these fabrics, we pick the ones we want, we save thousands of dollars. This sectional right here could very easily be $4,200. Look at it. Got a power. I'll show you right here. Reclining power. Here, here, two others over here. So you got four recliners. Console here. We sell it for $1,799, this sectional. Right, over here, all over leather sectional. And I'm not going to get any great detail about them because they won't be here but just a few days anyway, and then we'll have some more in just like it. But nevertheless, this is one that we got at the market. It was a closeout all over genuine leather. And we don't usually deal in leather. We deal in Duralux. I'll show you what Duralux is here. Duralux is a man-made fabric. It's a polyurethane. It feels like leather, but it is not leather match or anything like this. Over here, this is the real, the cow paid the price for this one. It's the real deal, genuine leather. We won't have many of them. This one was $6,000. We sell it for $2,900. That's if you just got to have the real deal. And I don't, you know, everyone likes that now and then. Come on over into this department. Those are the motion sectionals. These are stationary sectionals. If I'm not mistaken, we have 22 sectionals on this floor at any given time. So, sofa love, sectionals, dining room, Recliners, we got the works. And if you like something a little more flashy, turn around and look at this. Let me show you. Check that out. Red, green, blue, whatever color that is. Just a little trinket there to go along. But a lot of the youngsters seem to like that. Bedroom suits. All right, we buy our bedroom suits from a company out of Dallas, Texas. It's called Elements. These bedrooms, we buy them by containers and truckloads and closeouts. Now, if it's not a container, if it's not a, we don't, we don't order just one. We have to order a truck to get a real deal. But with everything as slow as it is these days in the industry and many other industries, when you buy that many at one time, you can get a deal on them. Trust me. We got this group, King Bed, Dresser Mirror, The Works, $13.99. $13.29, excuse me. This is real furniture. Notice the height of this furniture. We're not talking about kid furniture here. We're talking about the real deal here. Velvet lined drawers. Look here. You can open that drawer with one hand, put your furniture, your clothes in it with the other hand, and it not hang up on you. Come on around here. I want to show you something. Here's a bed here we bought. We got a I see, I don't know, I think we got 14 of these. These are Pulaski beds. They sold for $3,600. It's what this bed sold for originally. There's a closeout. Nine seventy eight dollars is our price, as long as we got them. And I'm going back up through here. Now, real furniture. Check this. The height and the size. Antique height, velvet line, English dovetail, Steel ball bearing glides. What that means to you as a customer, watch this. You can open it with one hand and shut it with one hand. So, I mean, this is real stuff. It's not, I know you can buy bedroom suits cheaper than $12.79, but you can't buy these 
You can't buy nothing like this. You can buy a pressed board, something to last you two years or something, but you won't get wood like we have. Come on back. We've got all different styles. I'll make sure that we have different for different age groups. If someone wants a different style, we got it. Contemporary. Again, take a look at the height of this chest. Hey, this is not children's furniture. Look at this thing. This chest must be five feet tall. See, it's a real deal. All right, let's see what the price on. Fourteen seventy nine for the complete group. Hey, by the way, speaking of complete group, you ever heard of a five piece group where it's a headboard, footboard, rails, dresser, and a mirror? A five piece group to us is the bed, dresser, mirror, chest, and a nightstand. Actually, it's a four piece group. I should come up with something else to make it five, but we don't need to because that's everything it takes. Now, here's a group like here. A little bit different, but look at the, see, even though, see how those drawers glide like that? See how easy they do? Hey, that's serious business. And, and nowadays, folks come in, they're so concerned about the price, they don't take a few moments to say, you know what? That's pretty good quality. But they'll wish they had in about six months. Look at this group here. For instance, this is a living room suit with nail heads. Now, these are individually, they have to hire somebody to put that nail in there, each one of them nail heads. That's not a strip of tin that you tack on here and tack on over there, and it falls off and rolls up six months later. Sofa and love seat on this one with the pillows, $9.99. It don't get any better than that. It's real furniture. Come on back here. We've got a recliner department right back here, but I want to show you something we got in the other day. These recliners, big man recliners. Look at this. Three position, chase recliner, and it's not a little recliner, fully warranted, 349 Now this thing will sell for $600 anywhere. 349 at Tupelo Ron's Best Mattress and More. Got it. Come on over here. Let me show you something. Our sofa sets are fully lined. See this, see this cushion? It's lined on both sides. Now, that may not mean much to you now, but it'll mean something to you in about a year or two when one side starts looking a little worn. You can just flip that cushion over and get more life out of them as opposed to a cheap product that half of the this side's covered and the other side's paper. You know what I'm talking about. Come on up. We use a company here called Fusion. They're part of the BFI, Broyhill Furniture Industries. Fusion is one of their sister companies. Broyhill, I don't even think, is in business anymore. Now, they, they went out of business, but their name will still be around. I'm sure they'll pick it up in China or something and use it. But it won't be the Broyhill that your mother and dad knew years ago. But this is Fusion. Pillows, fabric, these fabrics are $30 a yard on these pillows. This group right here, Sofa and Love, should be 16 something, 10.99 every day, every day. And if you're looking for something for maybe the first time out of the gate apartment or something, you're looking at 6.99 Sofa Love. Sofa and Love, 6.99. And don't worry about it if we have this one cuz we don't, we'll have another one like it. Another one of the fusion groups here. 10.99. Look at this. Real furniture, not scaled down. Big furniture. See that with the pillows. Folks, I wanted to bring you back up here and bring your attention to the quality of these sectionals. Uh, there are some different things too. We have next day delivery. I don't care what time of the day you get in here. You don't have to wait two weeks for the merchandise. If they special order it two months for the merchandise, we're going to bring it to you the next day. At if you're 30 miles in any direction from here, we go to Hurley, Mississippi at no charge, however far that is. I think it's about 30 miles. Uh, we go out here to Tillman's Corner. We go to Sarah Land. We go all of these places, no charge. All right. And I want to tell you a little bit about this. Since they come out with the Duralux, I know a lot of folks have had some real problems, including us, with what they call bonded leather. Well, what happened on bonded leather is this. They tested it. They have what's called a 30,000 rub test. It's a machine. They take that leather and they do this. 
They say 30,000 times. I don't know if they do or not. May just do it 10,000, but still a lot of times. But <clears throat> what they didn't consider is that the chemicals on, in our body when we perspire, in our hair, the clones that we wear, it separated the leather from the cloth that was bonded. So now they've come out with a thing called, some people call it Duralux, Durapella, but anyway, what it really is, it's a man-made material, like a microfiber, and it's on, put on to top of a cloth. It actually breathes. That way it doesn't peel, because that bonded leather was a nightmare, believe me. Can, I, I can imagine paying three or $4,000 for a product, three years later, it's peeling off. I mean, that's terrible. It's a terrible thing for the industry to do to us, to do to you. But they've tried to correct it, so we're past all of that. But one of the things I wanted to bring to your attention is the quick delivery, the no charge, and when you come in uh, and you have a problem, if you do have a problem and you're in one of these big chain stores, you come back in and you find your salesperson say, look, I got a problem. This arm come loose or whatever. Well, I, I can't help you. I'm a salesman. That's all I do. Well, who, who do I, I need to speak to your manager. Well, okay, yeah, we can take care of that. I'll turn that over to customer service over in Atlanta, Georgia somewhere, and they'll get back with you. But when you come in here, the salesperson will pick up the phone. They're going to call the manufacturer and say, look, we got a problem. Right arm facing is stitches come loose. I need to order that. I need to get it on order. Okay, and then as soon as it comes in, it usually takes about a week for, for the cuts to come in like that. Then we take it. We've got a guy here locally that not only works for us, works for other furniture stores. He'll come out and replace it. So you're talking to somebody that can get the job done. The only thing problem we've had is to get the message out. That's why we're going to start doing these 30-minute commercials like this, info commercials. That's at Tupelo Ron's Best Mattress and More at 7150 Airport Boulevard. Used to be Tupelo Furniture outlet, Tupelo Furniture outlet. So it's Tupelo Rhymes, Tupelo Furniture, however you want to say it. 7150 Airport Boulevard, we're handling the bedding, we're handling the furniture, and we are in a position now to make the prices better than ever. Had a lady in here today, in here today, that had been in some of the big chain stores, she said, your prices are great. She bought a bedroom suit, said, I can't believe it. I said, you can believe it. There is one catch. You got to buy the one you see, because I may not have another one like it. But we get them in all the time, because we're always doing these closeout things. Folks, let's talk about something that's dear to our heart. Sometimes, when you don't have the cash on hand, and you need those terms, extended terms, to get the product that you need or want at that time, that's okay. So if your credit is less than perfect, I mean like a lot less than perfect, we have a situation here where we don't need any credit. And it's not called a no credit check, it's a no credit needed program. And we can get you, we can get you financed with that with a small, the biggest down payment we've had to come up with uh, for the customers had to come up with is about $53 to get the product. And then they set you up on monthly payments. But now we also have 24 months same as cash. We do not have 17 years same as cash or whatever that is. I've heard some of these chain stores talking about. I, the other day I seen a commercial. Well, I heard it. I didn't see it. It was on the radio and they said a three ninety nine dollars sofa. Take up to 2021 to pay for it. I'm thinking $400, five years, Maybe you shouldn't buy that sofa. You know, I mean, that's a long time. So anyway, getting back to our program here, we have the 24 months same as cash, and you don't have to have perfect credit. Look, today's market, a lot of people's had some problems. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just means that you got a little credit problem. You come in here, I promise you, we'll make it snow in July. I promise you on that credit deal. We are, we will get it done. We'll do our best. I promise you that. All you need is a checking account and an ID, and it's a done deal. You might need some income, but other than that, we can get you fixed up. Folks, I just thought of something. Let's talk about how to get you here. We're just, what, one mile east of Schillinger, about two blocks west of Cody on the right-hand side. You can't miss us. UJ Chevrolet, right up here on the left. Ford Place, right up here on the left. We're in the heart of Dixie here, Mobile, Alabama. So. 7150 Airport Boulevard. We are open from 9 in the morning till 7 at night every day except Sunday. We're closed on Sunday right now. We're trying to 
have a little more family life. We used to be open Sunday too, but that's that's too much for us. There's not that many of us here. We're keeping our overhead down. That's another thing too. One of the reasons why we can sell cheap. There's not but five of us here. Me and two others in sales, and I work every day here. And then we got two delivery guys, and we do work, and we don't mind. We, it's a privilege to get to work. Or I feel like it. I don't know how they feel. I think they do. <laughs> but nevertheless, we're here at 7150 Airport Boulevard. Come on in and see us. I guarantee you we will do our best to earn your business. I am not kidding you. We're going to get you the deal. We're going to get it delivered fast. And if you do have a problem, we're going to take it personal, and we're going to fix it for you at Tupelo Furniture. Best mattress and more. Got to add that in there. I forget about these mattress people. You know, they want their little click. <laughs> we need them, though. Tupelo Furniture's Best Mattress and More, 7150 Airport Boulevard. Tell them. Tupelo Ron sent you. Hello, folks. Tupelo Ron here at 7150 Airport Boulevard. Tupelo Furniture, Best Mattress and More, where we're having our year-end clearance sale. Right now, we're having 60% off of our Sealy Postropedic bedding, 50% off of all sofa loves, 60% off of bedroom suits, and our Southern Motion sectionals as much as $2,000 off on the floor samples. That's at Tupelo Ron's, Best Mattress and More, 7150 Airport Boulevard. Tell them Tupelo Ron sent you. You're tuned in to Life Television Network, your number one Christian station. Hello, friend. I am Dr. Henry W. Roberts II, and I am the president of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries and also businessmen. But if you're out there and you're the place where you can learn and glean a fellowship, not somewhere where somebody's trying to lord over you or be your pastor, but you want to be in a, a part of something and your church is in an independent situation, and I know that there are a lot of us out there, but we're not independent, so to speak, but we're interdependent, and that's why we need fellowship. The Bible says where there's two, one can keep the other one warm. I want to come into unity and agreement with you, and I want you to consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Churches and Ministries. Man, I'm telling you, we have such great meetings. We have breakfasts every quarter, and in those breakfasts, we share things that help take our ministries to the next level. There are also times when we bring in special speakers, but most of the time, we're just networking and coming together and sharing a group of pastors and ministers and leaders from the community that are coming together to create change in the earth realm. If you need a place, call home, a place that's going to love you, give you instructions and impartations that will cause your ministry to grow and change and be all that you believe God has told you it could be, will become a part or consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries. I'm so blessed to be the president and the founder of this organization. It was birthed because I started birthing sons and we needed to be, be, have a place that we could convene around and just fellowship and glean from one another. The Bible says, iron sharpened desire. So there's the kindness of one friend to another. I may paraphrase that, but you know what I'm talking about. We need each other. Every joint supply. You may have a supply that I need. I may have a supply that you need. So an announcer is going to come and leave some information that you may know how to become a part of or find out when our next meeting is. I look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries, God bless you and keep you is my prayer. To learn more about the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries or to receive a membership packet, write to 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama 36611. Or you can call area code 251-456-2652.
praise the Lord. Welcome to the broadcast. I'm Pastor Dexter Easley of New Life Christian Fellowship Church, and I'm so excited that you joined us today. You know, we've been talking about tithing and how to tithe and all of those things, but one thing is so important is called the principle of the first. That means when you begin to honor God with your first, the Bible is very clear, is that we give to God, and in giving to God, we are honoring him. And the Bible says that our barns shall be filled with plenty, and our vats will overflow with new wine. Today, you're going to learn the principle of tithing first. So get your pad, get your pencil out, get your Bible out, follow along with me as I share this is a dynamic lesson on principle of tithing first. John chapter 10 and verse 10. The Bible says the thief does not come except to kill, uh, excuse me, to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and that they may have it what? More abundantly. Now I'm reviewing just a little bit because it's important to understand that we believe that abundant life is ours. Amen? Amen. We believe that it's the word of God. Amen? Amen. Now go over to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 because in Matthew 6 verse 33 talks about our teaching and our title of today's lesson. Now if you are taking notes, today's lesson is called the principle of tithing first. The principle of tithing first. The principle of tithing first. Now Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 when you get there say I am there. Ready? Now read. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be what? Added unto us. Now, we understand that we're talking about the principle of tithing first. The reason why we're talking about the principle of first, many of you have already heard me talk about this before, and that is that honoring God first. Matter of fact, I got a teaching series called the First Fruit Principles. How many have heard that? Amen. All right. So <clears throat> in this particular teaching, I'm still emphasizing on God first. God's got to be first in our lives. Now, uh, th this this kind of what I shared earlier. I don't know if I'm going to share it here, but I oh, praise God. Uh, one day I was <clears throat> I had asked um, uh, Jay uh, to help me out to find out why my battery of my phone was going down. My battery. OK, I said, Jay, my phone just keep running out. You know, he said, well, so he took the phone and he, he did something to it. And then he showed me, he says, well, he went somewhere on it, the settings or something. I don't know where he went. Still don't know. Uh, but I, <clears throat> I'm going to learn one day. Praise God. And, and he says, well, I want to show you something here. He says, um, he says I, this right here shows you what are you using up, you know. And then he broke it down to me. He says, 6%. Wow, 6% was texting. 17% was talking on the phone. 58% was done by Facebook. <laughs> and that was a sobering moment right then. You know, y'all looking kind of funny. You're like, wow, oh, no. It was a sobering moment for me. And, you know, he politely handed me back the phone. Like, that's your... <laughs> Amen. And so... I was trying to tell him to keep it quiet for his mother one here, and he, he said it loud. Yeah, 58% Facebook, y'all. <laughs> but my point is this, is that I didn't know that. I did not know that until he began to reveal that to me, that that's where I spent my time. Now, I made some, which he explained it to me why it was that way and everything like that. But still, uh, it, it still showed me an area where I put priority on. I put less on texting, 17%. Is all I talk to people. Right. Lady Lisa not here right now, but she got on me. She's trying to help me talk to people better. She says that I need to stop hanging up on people. <laughs> have a tendency to hang up on people. I don't have. I don't say bye. Just <laughs> you know, your husband got smart last time. He he ain't in. Yeah, that's right. I said, well, calm down. But I'm getting better. Ain't that right, Minister Rain? Okay, see that one saying? That's what I like. Yes, sir. I can ask him anything. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I like right now. If I can get a little bit more of that. Amen. And so I learned something. I learned something that sometimes we think that God is first. And until we take an inventory of our life and really figure out what we spend time with. See, because if God is really first, it will, it will show in our giving. It will show that we honor, not that we give more, and that's why I wanted you to get to me now, because some of your mortgages are more than your guys' uh, you know, a tithe. Yeah. Now, it, it, some mortgages are more than tithe, I think, right? 
Okay, so, so you give more to your mortgage than you give to your tithe and your offering. We understand that. That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about necessarily more. We're talking about first. We're talking about do you honor God first? And a lot of times you, you, you really don't know until you inventory your life. Because, see, if I honor God first, I would probably put a little bit more effort in church. You know, either showing up, maybe, or either helping, maybe, you know. I would show a little bit more effort if I looked at serving God as valuable. Right. Now, I'm not looking for you. I'm not, this is not a message to try to get you to serve more, what you need to, but this is not that message. This message is, do we really have God first? Yes. See, if we don't have God first, then when I talk about tithing first and the benefits of tithing first, then you would then look at it like just a mere another exercise of some law. I'm not really talking about the law. I'm talking about grace. And you got to understand God is a graceful God. But God, that does, because God is graceful, doesn't mean he violates principles to show grace. Right. In other words, he don't change the word in order to, for grace to abound towards you. You know that, right? Okay, okay, okay. I can see y'all studying that. Now, now, let's look at this now. Go over to 1 Kings chapter 17. Now, the principle of the first runs all through Scripture, the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. Is God really first in our lives? When God is first in our lives, everything comes into order. Look what it says. When God is first in our life, everything comes in order. Now, when I say that, I want you to understand that I'm not merely talking about that you don't have problems because you got God first in your life. I'm simply saying that God, your life begins to get in line. Now, when I talk about alignment, I'm talking about that now that my life is aligned with God, it allows me to have the blessing on my life. And that blessing means empowerment. Somebody say empowerment. When I say blessing, I'm not talking about stuff. I'm talking about the empowerment to get wealth. Amen? Now watch this now in 1 Kings chapter 17. And when we talk about Elijah here, we're talking about this prophet that came to this widow woman in Zarephath. And her and her son was getting ready to die. I mean, it was a phantom in the land. There was no food. There was no water. And all she had was just a little meal and a little oil. That's all she had. And so here she is right now gathering sticks and getting ready to make a fire. And they're getting ready to say, this is our last meal, her and her son, and now we're going to die. But the prophet shows up. And when the prophet shows up, the prophet tells her to go and get me some water. And, of course, give me a little bit, give me something to eat and give me some water. And then all of a sudden, the principle of the first showed up. Just look at this in 1 Kings chapter 17. Look at verse 13. Are you there, class? Ready? Now read. And Elijah said to her, do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it what? First. From it what? First. First, and bring it to me, and afterward make some for yourself and your son. Watch this, verse 14. For thus says the Lord of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the joy of oil dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. Praise God. In other words, he says, now, if you give it to me first, it's the principle of the first, is honoring God with it first, and then God is able to bless you. Amen? Amen? Now, go over to Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13. Now, when we start looking at in the book of Exodus, we're talking about people that were in bondage. We're talking about people that was enslaved. They was enslaved to Egypt, and Egypt and Pharaoh had them. How many ever seen Moses deliver the people? Amen. Lift up the sun. <laughs> Cross the Red Sea, right? So now, so because of that, here they are. They're in bondage. They're in, they're in captivity. And here God begins to orchestrate some things, begin to show them how to live beneath, uh, above and not beneath their situation. Amen? Now watch what's said here in Exodus chapter uh, 13 and verse 1. 13 and verse 1. Are you there? Ready? Now read. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying... Concentrate unto me all of the what? Firstborn. Whatever opens the wound among the children of Israel, both what? Man and beast is, is what? Is what? Now, isn't that a strong word? Isn't that a strong word? It's mine. So God says the first is what? 
mine. So if I do anything else with the first, does that still make the thing that I do with that first or where I send it or where I give it, is it still God? No. How? He didn't give it his first. Is it not God? Yeah, it's, still it, it's still his. Regardless of who you give it to, you can't change it because you change your mind of who you give it to. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Say, okay, I'm going to give this to you, my iPad. Is that iPad still mine? Yeah. Yes, it's still mine. I ain't give it to you like that, brother. I know you got a little happy. You got to start smiling. Yeah, no, 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 no. No. He wasn't smiling because of the iPad. He could afford many of them. He was, he was smiling because of the notes. He, he wants these teaching notes. <laughs> I know this one right here. <laughs> Amen. So, 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 now, it's still mine. So, you have, you've given God, now watch this now, you've given your tithe to Macy's. You've given your tithe to a credit card bill. You've given your tithe to a friend in need. You've given your tithe to Christian tutorage or college. <laughs> And so your tithe is floating around <laughs> everywhere else. And what you gave it to can only bless you back. Macy's don't bless you back. Amen. Well, they do. They do. They do. Lately, she told me they do. They do. She told me. Yes, she said, she said they do. She said, when you go there and you get 25% off, they trying to pay you back. Okay. And then she said, they do more than pay you back when they give you 50%. When they give you 50%, that means that you got it free. And I'm like, what? Yeah, that means if you buy one, you get one free, 50%. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then 75%, boy, you getting away with something then. You're robbing something. You need to put a mask on. <coughs> Amen. So when you, when you do that, those things cannot bless you. They cannot put an anointing on your life. It may put clothes on your back. They may pay a bill for next month to go for, for if you don't feel uh, obligated to pay a bill, but they don't bless you. So whatever you give that belongs to God is the reciprocal of what you get back from. So I don't know what Macy's have given you. I don't know what uh, Wells Fargo have ever given you. I don't know what any place you put the tithe at. But I guarantee you they never can bless you the way God can bless you. Amen. Amen. So can we settle that? I, I believe that. Okay. So now, let's look at this now. So in Exodus chapter 13, God begins to show us. And, and verse 2, he says, the firstborn of all the children of Israel, both male and, and beast, it is mine. Go down to verse 12. He said, that you shall set apart to the Lord all that opens the womb. That is what? Everybody. Every firstborn that comes from an animal, which you have, what? The male shall be the Lord's. See, can you keep hearing? Can you hear how this is going? It seems like God is saying that everything that is first belongs to me. Now, write this down if you want to. This was 4,000 years before Jesus. Amen. Okay, so, so let's get out of the, the thing. This is before the law. Uh, well, this right here is not, but I'm going to show you. It, it's also taught being first. Uh, it's taught before the law as well, 2,500 years before the law. Now, let's keep going because I, I see that many of you got good math going. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today. I know at this time that we interrupt the program, but we're going to go right back to it in just a few moments. But I wanted to give you an opportunity to get this CD in its entirety. All you have to do is call the number on the screen right now, and you can get this CD absolutely free. Yes, that's right. Call the number on the screen right now. Operators are waiting on your phone call, and plus we'll be praying for you, believing God with you, and of course, giving you the information that's going to help you grow in the things of God. Now, let me go back into the message already in progress, and I'm going to be right back to pray for you to receive Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. Now, watch this now. Go to verse uh, 13. Are you there? Ready? Now read. But every firstborn of a donkey shall redeem with a lamb. So in every, every offer, every time you're talking about, now, if I'm going to give to God, it says donkey. Now, understand what the donkey represents and understand what the lamb represents. 
if you will not redeem it, then you are, you shall break its neck, talking about the donkey, and all the firstborn of men among you, sons, you shall what? Redeem. Now, I want to say this to you real quickly. Now, notice he's talking about two animals. He says, the firstborn must be sacrificed or redeemed. The firstborn must be sacrificed or redeemed. Now, what is the difference? What caused it to be a sacrifice and what caused it to be redeemed? Well, a sacrifice is clean. Something that needs to be redeemed is unclean. All right? You with me so far? Now, the reason why this is important is because only a sacrifice can clean an unclean thing. Okay, let me do it this way. Only a sacrifice can redeem, got it, an unclean thing. All right? All right. Now, go to Galatians chapter th uh, 3, verse 13. So, now, when we hear the word redeem, we talk about unclean. So, when we go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Christ has redeemed who? Us. Us. So, who's unclean? Us. All right, y'all preaching better than I'm saying amen, amen. You're right, right. So, we are the ones that were unclean, but Jesus Christ was the sacrifice that cleaned us. Amen. And redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it's written, curses everyone who hangs on a tree. Amen. Now watch this now. Um, go, 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 to, go to Romans chapter 8 and verse 29. Romans chapter 8 and verse 29. How do you know whether to sacrifice it or to redeem it? God gives two animals. And of course, he gave the donkey and then he gives the lamb. When he gave the donkey, he said the donkey is the one that is unclean. So what did he say? He said, swap out the donkey for a lamb. And he says, now, if you don't swap it out, break the donkeys. So you're going to lose it anyway. Amen. See, if you don't tie, you're going to lose it anyway. Amen. It's going somewhere anyway. Right. If you if you don't do it, it's going somewhere. It's going somewhere else that cannot bless your life. And here, even four thousand years ago, here it is. Jesus is talking. Oh, God's talking right now about, hey, if you don't take care of this first, if you don't honor me first, the thing that you're trying to hold on to is going to be gone anyway. Amen. Amen. Now, watch this now. Uh, in Romans chapter eight, and verse twenty nine. Are you there? Watch this, verse 29. Ready? Now read. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be, for, be, be conformed to the image of his son. Watch this. That he might be the what? Firstborn of many brothers. So Jesus is the firstborn of many brothers. Now, now watch this now. That is the, the same scripture that we're talking about in Exodus that talks about the firstborn. Giving God your firstborn. Now, if God requires the firstborn of us, and he also has given his firstborn. Now, let's go look at this. Go over to John chapter 3 and verse 16. I'm proving it this morning. Amen? Amen. And this is the reason why I believe that the enemy fights your tithing. He fights your tithing primarily because Jesus was a tithe. Amen. They didn't like that part there. No, Jesus was God's tithe for mankind. He became the first of the firstborn of many brethren. He was the tithe. How do I know? Look at John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, who? His only begotten. His what? Only begotten. So that alone lets me know it's his first and it's his only. Got it? So he does what? He gives... His only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. So Jesus is the firstborn. Now, now, the reason why this is important, watch this now. It's because the devil, if he can get you not to honor God's first, got it? Then you will never be able to tap into the blessing that's connected with honoring God. Now, this is, this, is, this, is, this, this, this is really, really exciting to me. You know, you can tell I'm excited. It's because now I understand why the enemy fight tithing. Amen. You know why? It's because he never wants Jesus to be first in your life. Amen. He never wants you to show it. 
He wants you to talk about it. He wants you to shout about it. He wants you to run about it. But he don't want your bank account. He don't want your life to see it. You know, I was talking with one of my uh, neighbors the other day, and we was talking about how people say they love God, but yet don't show up when God needs them. Amen. And he said, isn't it amazing that people don't show up when God needs them? What I mean by needs them, you know, we know God don't need you. But when, God, when there's time for service for, God, for the house of God, and I'm not talking about just coming to church. I'm talking about when God wants to do something big in somebody else's life. Amen. Got it? And I told him this. This is what I said. I says, it is like God's taking a roll call and you miss first period. You come to school, but you miss first period. Got it. The school that I went to was a little bit old type school. They believed if you miss first class, you're out of class altogether. I don't care if you went to anyway. I don't care. You, you walk into class and second, you, go, you can go to class. All, you are now out the whole day. And I stay in the office arguing. I was here. I was here. They, I even had one, one teacher, substitute teacher one time, looked at me and said, I saw you, but you wasn't here. <laughs> I said, how? I, I said, I, I told the principal, I said, is she, is she lying or something? I mean, he said, no. He said, because you didn't make first class. And first class is the class that denotes whether or not you are here or not. You can say, yes, I'm here in all of the other classes, but far as for the school, you wasn't here. And a lot of times people are doing that. They're going to second, third, and fourth class, but they hadn't came to the first class where Jesus was at. They show up, but it's always a step behind, a little bit late. But they want God to show up. Watch y'all self now. Watch y'all self. Watch y'all self. So isn't it amazing that if God was to treat us the way we treat him, we probably wouldn't have no calls. No breakthroughs. Got it? So I'm just saying, he does it because he's love toward us, but that doesn't mean that he's smiling at it and we can. He's saying to you, if you don't prior to me in your life, I'm not going to be number one coming through for you. Well, once again, I'm so excited that you joined us. I thank you for being a part of our broadcast today. I know that listening to this word, you can't get it all in one sitting. You've got to hear it over and over and over again. So we're going to make this available for those that are viewing this broadcast right now. You are able to get the CD absolutely free. Yes, the day CD, you can get it free, but you must call the number on the screen. And once you call that number, you'll talk with one of our operators. They'll send it out to you once again, postpaid, free for you, and be a blessing to you. Now, we do have the entire series for any uh, $20 or more donation, we'd love to be able to send that out to you and, uh, and it'll be a blessing to you once again. But today's CD, call the number on the screen, you can get it absolutely free. Now, I always say this to you for you can understand and know that if you go to our website, there will be a cost for the entire package. But if you call the number on the screen, you can get this CD absolutely free. We just want to be a blessing to you and start you on your way to be able to live that life that God calls you to live. And that's called the abundant life. You know, the Bible is very clear in John 10 and 10 that Jesus came for us to live the abundant life. Well, the way to live the abundant life is to live by principle and not by emotion. And this is so important. When you live by faith, you can receive the things of God. So let me pray for you. If you're not saved, if you're not born again, if Jesus Christ is not Lord of your life, today is your day to receive him as Lord of your life. Let me pray for you right now. Say, Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins, known and unknown. I renounce them all. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you now as Lord and Savior of my life. Well, if you said that prayer, meant it with your whole heart. Call us here at New Life Christian Fellowship Church. We are standing by with prayer warriors and prayer counselors waiting on you. We want to send you out some information that's going to change your life. Yes, we're going to send you out a disciple manual. We're going to send you out a daily bread. We're also going to send you out a CD that's truly going to bless your life, and you'll be able to. And all these things are absolutely free. Now, also, too, you need to do this for me. Now, you receive Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life, but you need to get in a Bible teaching church that's going to teach you the word of God. Where you go and God's going to do incredible things in your life, it, you've got to get into a local church. Now, if you're saying, Pastor, I'm not in a church or Pastor, I'm looking for a church, all you have to do is go to our website. 
when you go to our website, hit over in the comment section. And when you go over into the comment section, all you have to do is say, looking for a church, tell us your name and what area you live in, and then we'll respond back to you and send you out some churches in your area. Now, that's what we want to do. We want to help you get planted because we truly believe that you grow uh, by getting that word of God in your life by fellowshipping with other believers. Well, I'm Pastor Dexter Easley of New Life Christian Fellowship Church, and we just thank you for joining us today in experiencing new life. God bless you. He didn't see me when I was dirty. He didn't see me when nobody else would bother with me. He didn't see that I was broken from addictions and things in my life. That he, he, he didn't do that. See, but God did. And so when you see me give, don't, 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 don't think that I'm giving because I'm trying to impress God. I'm giving because God has been so good to me. I, I, I ain't giving because I'm trying to get him to move on my half. I said this at the first service, and I mean what I say. I'm not giving. Y'all got to listen to me. I'm not I'm going to get on that chair. I, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not giving because I'm looking for a blessing. I'm already blessed. But I think of his goodness. Mm, mm, mm. Glory. I got to calm down. The principle of tithing first. Call now for a free CD of today's broadcast. Now 1-866-910-LIFE. That's 1-866-910-5433. Dr. Easley would like you to have this free CD. Also, don't forget Dr. Easley's offer to receive the Abundant Life series for a love offering of $20 or more. Call our phone representative at 866-910-5433 today to get this offer. We are waiting for your call. Visit our website at newlifegcsc.org where you'll find more series by Dr. Easley. We would like to invite you to connect with Dr. Easley on Twitter at Dr. Dexter Easley on Facebook facebook.com NLCFGCSC on YouTube Dexter Easley Ministry and visit our website at newlifegcsc.org Stay connected Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Bridgeport. Now here we're generations later still dealing with the same spirits that they dealt with in times of slavery. So most of the demons that we deal with in our community and even in our society are still spirits that have attached themselves to us and have us still thinking like we slaves yeah. instead of free men. Yeah. Welcome to Power in the Word, the exciting teaching ministry of yours truly, Dr. Henry W. Roberts II. I am the founder and pastor of the Word of Life Community Church, one church, multiple locations to serve you and your entire family. Right now, I want you to call a neighbor, call a friend, let them know that Power in the Word is on the air. And after this, I'm going to come back and let you know how you may obtain a copy 
of today's message. So until I should see you again on this air, God bless you and keep you. Get ready to be blessed. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, very interesting scripture. You, you Sometimes in your own time, private, quiet time, you need to get it. Read that whole section because it, it talks about the heart of the Father. Everybody say, God is our Father. Come on, one more time. God is our Father. And a father only has the best interest for his children at heart. One more time. The father only has the best interest for his children at heart. All right, now let's read uh, together. What I say, verses 15 through 20, ready, read. For though we have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have... Wherefore I beseech you, come on, read. My beloved son, and faithful in the Lord. Hmm. Amen. We're we'll going to finish it. What will ye? Shall with a rod or in love or in the spirit of meekness? Well, see what was going on. You know, sometimes people get to rebelling. And Paul had heard some things they probably had been saying out there. And Paul said, I ain't scared of none of y'all. And uh, I'm going to be on the way to see you. <laughs> and uh, we'll discuss those things that you want to talk about when I get with you face to face. Amen. But prior to that, this scripture begins to deal with the heart of the Father. Fight, write these six things down, then we're going to try to review them according to scripture. First of all, there's a difference between the anointing of an instructor and the anointing of a father. First of all, there is a difference between the anointing of an instructor and of, of the father. It's a difference. Number two. Everyone does not have a father's heart. Everyone does not have a father's heart. Number three. Recognize that the father or a father gives birth to things. I like to say it like this, real men make things happen. Fathers give birth to things. Number four, recognize that a father leads by example. A father leads by example. Number five, the father will assign our caregivers that keep you in remembrance of your inheritance. The father assigns caregivers that will keep you in remembrance of your inheritance. Then number six, Fathers, teach us how to follow God. Amen. See, we have to remember one thing about it. We serve the God of Abraham. Come on, y'all, help me finish it. And who? So he was the God of who? Our fathers. So the Bible starts talking about he's the God of our fathers. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. See, so if, you, if you, you've been raised, uh, and, 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 and it's, a, it's somewhat of a sad thing in times that not every father is at home. So when I get on my first point here, I just want to do it like this. It says there's a difference between the anointing of an instructor and, and, and a father. Well, number one, he says, look at verse 15. He says, for though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet ye have not many fathers. For in Jesus, 
Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. So we understand, first of all, that there's a difference between an, an, an instructor's anointing and a father's anointing. Well, in, in our society, it's gotten so broken down, and, and, and I'm going to just deal with it. Just One day I was praying and talking to God uh, about some things and, and dealing with the family. And God told me like this. He said, a lot of people, because of absentee fathers, they have been leaning to the elder brother's anointing. Now y'all stay with me. What I mean by that, if you lived in a household and your father was gone and you had other siblings, generally the oldest brother became more of your leader, your guide, your teacher. Sometimes it wasn't no daddy that taught you how to tie your shoes, it was your big brother. Sometimes it wasn't your daddy that taught you how to ride a bicycle, big brother, uncle. Now, the only difference between that is your sibling really does not know too much more than you. Amen. So what we have been doing when we receive from that, even though it's kept us stable, probably kept us in some good situations, but we've just been receiving, how can I say this, horizontally and not vertically. If I got time, go to Psalm 133. See, an anointing flows down. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't flow vertically. I, I mean horizontally. It flows down. So just because I taught you how to ride your bike, tie your shoes, maybe even tie your tie, sometimes Big Brother had to plat out. Right. Yeah, one of my good friends got a bunch of sisters. And they were younger than him. Their daddy died when they were young. Man, he know how to do how just as good as some of the sisters. Do twists, put borets on them. He know the difference between a plait and a braid. Come on up in here. But now he's real masculine. But because their father passed, if he was the oldest sibling, he fell in the place of what would resemble a father. But he still wasn't a father. He was just my big brother. And so if there was no father there, watch me now, I'm teaching you something, to impart to him on fatherhood, manhood, and how to really be a man. I mean, you know, a lot of his things are misconceived also. Well, y'all understand what I'm saying? So a, a elder brother, a sister's anointing is more like a teacher, an instructor. Write this down. See, fathers protect, they cover, they provide. Uh-huh. And at times they give instructions, but greater than that, they give you an impartation. Your father, see a lot of times we don't know it because we come from a matriarchal society and I'm, I'm going further than I want to go today. Because of the spirit of slavery, it left us in this place. How many of y'all watch the new roots? Or the old roots? Well, let me, let me give you, tell you what happened during slavery. First, with, before we came from Africa, and I can only say we because I'm black. We were strong family ties. The father was looked at as a prince or a king. That's why they say the man is a king of his castle because he was the head of his family. So when they enslaved us, put us in chains, and I say this is carried over from the spirit of slavery, simply because once we got free, our minds were not free. And we continued to carry on like slaves. So instead of us learning how to really be committed to one family, because I was, if I was a big buck, strong, you know, now they're going to use me to breed to make other big, strong bucks to work in the field. Ain't nobody saying that. So what happened? He opened up a gateway in the spirit for a whole mongling spirit to rest on me. And instead of me being a father, because I told you a father provides, protects, covers, uh, uh, sometimes gives instruction, but more than that, he gives you an impartation. And he lets you know who you are. Because of that, now we got children everywhere. And we, because of the spirit of slavery, because you know, you never got to raise your family. That's right, that's right. Because if you watch the movie Roots, or uh, uh, what's that other one that was out before Roots that was on TV? The Underground, yeah, but this is another movie. Uh, where, <laughs> where the man, well, yeah, yeah, I just saw it. I can't even think of the name of it. Well, I like the movie too. You know, some folks don't like it. Somebody help me. 
12 years a slave. Do y'all remember in 12 years a slave how even the little boys was sold off? So how about it? If, if I had a good master and he still kept me around the family, my sons never get to bond with me because by the time they get old enough and strong enough to work in the field, if Mazza needed a little extra money, he sold you off. He sold my daughters. He sold my children. So what happens to me? Psychologically speaking, I never get attached to nothing. Psychologically speaking, I then start being afraid to attach myself. Now here we're generations later still dealing with the same spirits that they dealt with in times of slavery. So most of the demons that we deal with in our community and even in our society are still spirits that have attached themselves to us and have us still thinking like we slaves instead of free men. I told y'all to go somewhere. I said, look at somebody say the oil flows down. Psalm 133, watch this. Ready? Read it. Everybody not reading. Faith comes out. Come on. Faith comes out. Come on, faith comes out. All right, now get on your page, get your book out. Because see, I don't want you leaving here saying the preacher said, I want you to know what the Bible says. Amen. So you can begin to understand the difference between my big brother ministering to me and when my father speaks to me. Amen. See, because if I get attached to the wrong spirit or the wrong individual, when you get this grown with daddy, I'm going to get this wrong with daddy. See, when you raise in a family, <laughs> You know when the belt come out. If it wasn't time for you to get no whooping, best thing for you to do is get somewhere and get quiet and get out the way because you might catch some friendly fire. Ain't nobody up in here but me. They go to whooping everybody. Well, I won't just whoop you two. Just <laughs> Doc said he know about that. Belt gonna hit everybody. You get on somewhere, get out the way. I remember, I, you know, I didn't have a bunch of siblings, y'all know that, but I have cousins, and a lot of times I'd be left in family situations with my paper on my mother trusted, and they would tie behind. And, 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 you know, I always personally, because I ain't like whoopings, I always had personal lines of demarcation. <laughs> like where the rest of them might go on past a certain line. I'm stopping right here. Now, my, now, I ain't gonna lie to you. My feet might be right on the edge with them. I might even be halfway across the line. But I ain't come all the way across the line. So when they got ready to start swinging that belt, I really wasn't qualified to get in on that, if you understand what I'm saying. And so when that would happen, then I'd call home. Me and a couple of my cousins, my cousin ran, and we'd call and say, hey, I'm ready to come home. Because Uncle L.K. ain't no friend to put it down up in here. Y'all understand what I'm saying? See, so, so, so you have to understand then that a father desires to cover. And he has to give you room to grow. But you can't get confused with your siblings over your parents. Now y'all, my daughters in here, women in here, you've been left in the house in charge. And when mom and daddy would leave you in charge, some of them in the house say, you ain't none of my mama. Yeah. Or if it was the big brother that was in charge, you ain't none of my daddy. Ain't nobody ain't gonna help me out today, but it's alright. But mama left you in charge. And so because now my daddy might have been in prison, he might have had four or five different families, he never spent the proper time with me, I didn't get to really know him, he never really covered me, ain't nobody going to help me, but I'm going to teach this text anyhow. Guess what happens to me? Then I really don't even know how to relate to a man. That's right. That's right. Not one telling me what to do. That's right. That's right. Amen. See, because my brother may tell me what to do, and I can defy him. But if my daddy tells me what to do, I can't defy him. I shouldn't defy Because if I'm willing and obedient, I'm going to eat the good of the land. See, me learning how to walk in obedience, it blesses me. So when the spirit of rebellion comes in on a young fella, a young woman, it's because the devil is trying to push you out of purpose. And nobody in the world 
is really your friend. Anyone that tries to take you away from God is of the devil. Anyone that points you to God, God sent them in your life. See, sometimes my brother, he'll compromise with me. See, we develop all these different fellowships so we have points of accountability as we get older. Ain't nobody here but me. So if I get off and goofy, I got some folk I really trust that will tell me enough of the truth to know, no, you can't do that, Doc, you wrong. But when I get involved, sometimes my brother, he might compromise with me if he don't have the right bar standing himself. He'll help me figure out a way to get my sin done instead of helping me figure out a way to get out of sin. See, because when I get involved in it, see, I, I, a long time ago, old preacher told me sin is like a snowball falling off a mountain. It starts real small. But as it rolls down the mountain, it progressively picks up more snow. So what I thought wasn't damaging, at the top, by the time it hits the end and it explodes, it messes up everything it hits. So I don't need nobody that's going to always agree with me when I'm wrong. I, yeah, you might tell me, yeah, that sounds good, but you're still wrong. Those are the type of people you need to surround yourself with. Or else you'll get at ease in Zion and think you all right when you're all wrong. You know, the Bible talks about being turned over to a reprobate mind. Now, that's the brother or the sister that's carnal, a carnal believer. You know, the Bible talks about three times believer. I'm trying to get through. Y'all need to let me get through. You got the one that's spiritual. Then you got the other one that's natural. Say the natural man, he receives not the things of the spirit. They are foolishness unto him. Then there is the carnal man. The carnal man is when I go to church. I feel like I'm all right after Sunday Bible study. But I'm really not, really, really, really not trying to walk this thing fully out. That's right. Now, when I'm a carnal, according to the word of God, he says, I put myself at enmity with God. Now, why do I want to fight my daddy when he's trying to bless me? He says, if I'm willing and obedient, I'm going to eat the good of the land. Am I working up in here this morning? Come on, say the oil flows down. And say, if I'm going to get it right. Wow, wasn't that word good? You can obtain a copy of today's message by simply calling or writing us or even emailing us at the information that will be located on the screen. Word of Life is a need-meeting church with several opportunities to serve you and your entire family. We have activities for children, youth, teens, adults. I mean, we, we try to touch the total man. We got a gym you can work out in. We got a soup kitchen that's open every Thursday. I'm telling you, there's not a place where you can't serve. So if you're looking for a place to serve, learn, and grow, then consider the Word of Life Community Church. And until next time on the same station at the same time, remember that without faith, it's impossible to please God and you'll be blessed. Thank you for tuning in to Power in the Word. To order a copy of today's message, simply write to Power in the Word, 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama, 36611. We would love to have you come fellowship with us at Word of Life Community Church located at 111 South Florida Street in East Bruton, Alabama. Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school, followed by an 11 o'clock worship service, and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Power Hour Bible Study. For more information, log on to our website or call 251-456-2652 or 251-809-2887. Here are the ways that you can stay connected to the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network. You can go to the following websites, www.powerintheword.org or www.wordoflifetv.org. You can also view us on Ustream by going to www.ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash life television. You can also view us on the Roku channel by clicking on the channel store going to the category titled new and clicking on life television network you can also tune in to life radio network by going to the website www.tunein.com going to the search bar typing in life radio network 
and there you will find our station. For those of you who are in Chickasaw or the surrounding areas, you can tune in to us on 87.9 FM. You can also stay connected to us by way of social media by going to YouTube, typing in the search bar, Word of Life TV Network. You can also like us on Facebook by going to the search bar and typing in Life TV. You can also follow Dr. Roberts on Twitter by going to www.twitter.com forward slash HWROB2. We here at the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network thank you for your continued support. Hello, friend. I am Dr. Henry W. Robinson II, and I am the president of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries and also businessmen. But if you're out there and you're looking for a place where you can learn and glean a fellowship, not somewhere where somebody's trying to lord over you or be your pastor, but you want to be in a, a part of something and your church is in an independent situation, and I know that there are a lot of us out there, but we're not independent, so to speak, but we're interdependent. And that's why we need fellowship. The Bible says where there's two, one can keep the other one warm. I want to come into unity and agreement with you. And I want you to consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Churches and Ministries. Man, I'm telling you, we have such great meetings. We have breakfasts every quarter. And in those breakfasts, we share things that help take our ministries to the next level. There are also times when we bring in special speakers. But most of the time, we're just networking and coming together and sharing a group of pastors and ministers and leaders from the community that are coming together to create change in the earth realm. If you need a place to call home, a place that's going to love you, give you instruction and impartations that will cause your ministry to grow and change and be all that you believe God told you it could be, will become a part or consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministry. I'm so blessed to be the president and the founder of this organization. It was birthed because I started birthing sons and we needed to be, be, have a place that we could convene around and just fellowship and glean from one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron, iron. So there's the kindness of one friend to another. I may paraphrase that, but you know what I'm talking about. We need each other. Every joint supply. You may have a supply that I need. I may have a supply that you need. So an announcer is going to come and leave some information that you may know how to become a part of or find out when our next meeting is. I look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries, God bless you and keep you is my prayer. To learn more about the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries or to receive a membership packet, write to 351 Southcraft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama 36611. Or you can call area code 251-456-2652. Now it's a time when we can all participate in this. This gives you a great opportunity. If you've been blessed by this broadcast, you may be sitting behind that television screen, internet, or on your screen of your computer saying, what must I do to be saved? I am so glad you asked. It's very simple. Jesus said, my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Call upon me and I will answer you. You know what? He's sitting there waiting for you to call him. All you got to do is pray this prayer with me. Repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you. That your word declares that if I will confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, that I would be saved. Now, God, I renounce the hidden works of the darkness, and I ask Jesus to come into my heart, come into my life, and save me, redeem me. I thank you, God, for my sins being forgiven, and I thank you for coming into my life and saving me. I believe I receive my salvation right now. Wow, it's just that simple. Listen, I want to put a powerful tool in your hand. It's free. If you pray this prayer with me or you're just watching the broadcast and you desire to know more about your salvation, I have a little book I wrote some time ago called What is Salvation? I want to put a copy of this book in your hand. It can be read in one easy setting. You can share it after you get through with it, leave it in a bathroom or share it with your friends or your family members. But it talks about what salvation is, what salvation isn't, and how you can obtain salvation and maintain your, your new walk with Christ. I want to welcome you to the family of God and thank you for tuning in each and every week or however you may watch this broadcast. And I thank you for your support, your prayers, and your seed. God bless you. And keep remembering that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, you be blessed. To receive your copy of the book, What is Salvation? Simply write to Word of Life Community Church, 351 Southcraft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama.
And remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You be blessed. Be sure to check your local listings for the days and times that you can view the Power in the Word broadcast. Life Community Church is here to serve you with one church in four locations. In Pritchard, Alabama, located at 1682 South Atmore Avenue, on Sundays at 8.30 a.m. In Chickasaw, Alabama, located at 351 South Craft Highway, on Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. And in East Bruton, Alabama, located at 111 Florida Street, on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. And in Pascagoula, Mississippi, located at 3705 Burden Avenue on Thursdays at 7 o'clock p.m. For more information, log on to our website at www.powerintheword.org. This has been another edition of Power in the Word. On behalf of Dr. Henry and Sherry Roberts and the entire Word of Life Community Church family, we say God bless. Tune in next week to another edition of Power in the Word. And remember that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, God bless. It's that time of year again. Get ready to be tremendously blessed. The 26th Annual International Gulf Coast Word Convention and Convocation of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries will be July 25th through the 27th. This year's theme is God is doing a new thing. There's an awesome lineup of speakers. Wednesday, July 25th is Men's Night. The speaker is convention host, Dr. Henry W. Roberts II. Thursday, July 26th is Women's Night. The speaker is Dr. R.C. Blakes Jr. Friday, July 27th is Youth and Family Night. The speaker is Dr. Todd Hall Sr. We will also have daily intercessory prayer Wednesday through Friday. Noonday prayer is from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. And nightly prayer is from 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. But wait, there's more. Impact sessions will be held on Thursday and Friday starting at 6.30 p.m. each night. Our impact speakers are Bishop Wayne Johnson and Pastor John May. Bishop Johnson will discuss the faith needed to build ministry. Pastor May will talk about developing the faith to redefine your ministry. Mark your calendars and save the dates, July 25th through the 27th. For more information, contact Word of Life's office at 251-456-2652. Looking forward to seeing everyone at this year's convention and convocation. Welcome to a Taking the Kingdom Special Moments broadcast. This broadcast is in honor of Prophet Blake's and Lady Lois's 44 years of dedicated service to the Kingdom of God. Now, let's go into the sanctuary. Tonight, I want to talk to you for a few minutes tonight from uh, the subject, Angry Hot. Temper. How 
to control it. Angry. Um, there's so many people that are out of control. They have no control over their temper. Number one, when one allows himself to become angry, he's really out of control. Now all anger is not in itself sinful. There are times when God is angry. <laughs> times that when he is angry anger is um, is a mental unbalanced temporarily insane unless that you are in control. But the average person who gets angry or out of control. And you must, as Christians, we are human beings. And our time that we get angry. But then you know how to control it. Now you control anger by not trusting yourself. That time when you get angry, it's best to go and allow yourself to regather itself. Don't say what you want to say. That's when you're angry, it's always wrong. Something happened when you get angry. Your choice of words changes. You'll say some things that you surprise yourself. Huh? Somebody looking down now and says, Lord, I'm angry right now. <laughs> I, I'm, I want to write a book on this. Keeping yourselves within control. See, what happens when you get angry? You always want to use your mouth. And my grandmother said, nothing hates a duck but his beard. Yes, sir. If I keep my mouth, you will never know what's on the inside. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Angry, hot tempered. You got to make sure that there are times that you need to pray before speaking. Somebody said, think twice before speaking. Don't speak too fast. And there are some of you all have no control over your mind. You're ready for anything come up at any time. 
You were saying, start it and I'll beat you keeping it up. But you cannot do that as children of God. For one thing, a child of God must always manifest that I'm in control. God Almighty. Look at, look at Psalm number 7 and verse 11. Psalm number 7 and verse 11. All right, baby. Y'all see that? You do see that. That's why I tell you, it's not always sinful to be angry. God judges the what? The righteous. Wait a minute. Wait just one second. Let me just get this page and hold it down. God judges the righteous. And God is what? Anger with what? The, the wicked win. Every day. Every day. Talk about it. Yes. Weak becomes sorrowful. Hallelujah. Yeah. And the weak, the wicked become braggadocious. Yes, sir. The wicked act as though that God does not exist. Yeah, that's, right. Huh? that's right. That's it. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. So God is angry yes. with the wicked. Yes, yes. The wicked will be destroyed. Yes. yes. But the weak will be strengthened. Yes. Somebody, somebody, somebody. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Angry. A lot of people uh, wait until they get angry to tell you what's on their mind. Been wanting to tell you that a long time, but I had to wait until I got angry to do it because see, you can't hold me responsible because that's all I was angry. Are y'all understand? Temporarily insane. You know, a lot of people get drunk to do that. Ben want to tell you. But I had to hide, have something to hide down. Yeah. Have I got a witness to see? Yeah. I didn't mean to say that, but you made me angry. Yeah. I really didn't mean to say that, but you made me angry. Yeah. See, you're never supposed to lose control. No, no, no. Even when you're angry. Yeah. Because anger is a test of strength. Yeah. It is to show you how strong you are. Do I have a witness yet? How can I control myself under a spell of anger? How can I control? Can I maintain my Christian calmness? I'm angry now, but can I maintain? Now, sometimes maintaining it is to give yourself a walk. If walking will keep you in control, then go on and walk. Are you understanding what I'm saying? If you need period to cool off, God taught you how to do that. When Adam let him down, he waited until it cooled. Waited until he calmed down. And then came down. Because if he had came down in the heat of the day, uh, that would have been destruction. But when it came down, when it cooled down, 
when it cooled off, he came down that he might drop a ladder for man to go up. Thank the Lord. I don't believe y'all hear what I am saying. Learning how to control. Learn how to not say everything come up. Some people say, well, you know, whatever comes up, comes out. You're a foolish, you're a foolish person. You may not let everything come out, comes up. There are a whole lot of things that comes is in, better not come out of there. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Because if it came out, I would reflect upon my Christian relationship. Yes, there are some things that comes to my mind that I better not allow come out. You better hear what I'm saying to you. Y'all don't mind me talking. All right, all right, right. We're going to talk then since you want me to talk. So, learning how to do that. Many things, many jobs have been lost because we, we wasn't able to keep our mind. And because we weren't able to keep our mouths, we have never been able to replace the quality of jobs since. Learning how to control anger. Learn how to do that. Learn how. See, it's bad when you don't have no self-control. Mm. Learning to have self-control. Many women have lost good husbands. Because somebody said, don't take that. Had no control over thy anger. So he made her angry. And she lost the best man in the world. But she only realized that after she realized that she lost it. See. Are you understanding? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Angry destroys, and it will destroy you. The first thing it does, it destroys the qualities that are on the inside of you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And when you lose that inability. You have no control on that out ability. It's because it's not so much of anger as it is what it causes. It will cause depression. It will cause low self-esteem. Yes, 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 it will. Because it'll call you to stoop lower than what you are. Somebody, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Yeah, he made me angry. And you wind up saying he made me angry. But you see, you 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 you, you can't live with anger. So you ought to do something that you can live with. Yes, sir. Don't allow a temporary thing to mess you up for life. Hallelujah. Amen. So my temporary feeling has messed me up for my whole lifetime. Learning to be in control. So learning to be God became angry with the wicked. 
And you got to understand that, see. Because a fella is weak doesn't mean he's weak yet. Peter was weak, weak enough to deny him. But he became one of the greatest apostles. Somebody ought to shout out me. That's why he said, the weak in me, just say you're strong. He said, let the weak say. And the reason why he said that, baby, is because what you say is what you get. If you say I'm weak, you get weaker. So you're giving the devil something to work with. But if you say you're strong, even though you're weak, you got something to pull up by. Somebody, 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 somebody. God was, uh, look at the uh, first king chapter uh, 11 and verse 9. Look at first king chapter 11 verse 9. Uh, Y'all don't mind me just talking a little bit. Uh, I want to get your permission. Hallelujah. Oh yes. Look at the 11th chapter and the 9th verse. 11 chapter 9. Y'all got it? Boy, y'all something. I tell you. This makes me feel good to see y'all just able to find those pages just like that. Just find them just like that. 11 and 9. Do y'all see that? All righty. What did it say? And the Lord was angry with Solomon. God was angry with him. Because his what? Hard was turned from the Lord, God of Israel. Watch your heart. Watch your heart. See, you're in church, but where? Where is your heart? You're singing, you're shouting, but where is your heart? hard had turned and that strange thing about a man when he turned when he leaves God he always turned from so one never get weak turning toward God he always get weak turning away from so God was angry with him and you know why God was angry because he had invested so much in Solomon. Yes, sir. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To see the wisest king that God had ever given to become the biggest fool the world have ever known. Some other the shot had lived. What happened to Solomon? What happened to Solomon? Number one. Solomon got him a woman from every ethnic, every background that were. This is why he ran a peaceable kingdom. Because when a nation rose up to fight him, he said, remember, I got your children. Your Remember, married to your daughters. But where he made the mistake, it wasn't the women that he had. Not that God endorses that, but it wasn't the women's. The thing that defiled him, he brought all of those strange gods in Israel and started worshiping those idols. Y'all better come on here and shout hallelujah. Oh, 
Y'all don't mind me talking. <laughs> so the Lord said, I'm angry with you, man. Look what he says. I am going to do it. Hmm. Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord and the God of Israel, which had what appeared unto him twice. He went to him twice. And had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. He was disobedient. He refused to keep what God commanded. And one thing about God, he'll give you something, he'll take it away from you. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, for as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my stature which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend, mean take it away from you the kingdom from thee and will give it to thy servant. Yes. Yes. I'm going to take you down from being a king to a servant. And I'm going to take a servant and bring him up to king. Y'all not going to pray with me, are you? <laughs> yes, Lord. My God. See, don't take God long to pull you down and put somebody else up there. No, sir. Not long enough. It don't take long. Because you would not obey. Because you refuse to listen to me. I'm going to take the privilege away from you. Hallelujah. I'm going to take your king's seat. And I'm going to set one of your servants in it. That's humiliated, boy. For God to take your subject and put him over you. But he would not listen. He would not obey. And it angered God. Somebody ought to shout out and leave. And somebody said it's bad to fall in the hands of an angry God. It's awful to fall in the hands of an angry God. See, the more given, the more required. If God has given you more, he's expecting more. Look at Pastor now. See, this is what you have to watch. There's a spirit in anger. And if you don't take control of it, it will ultimately destroy you. You're not going to pray with me, are you? Now, a lot of children are born with this spirit because during the whole pregnancy that mother was staying angry man I'm so glad I wish some of y'all didn't give birth to me to crying in a shame oh lord you know your personality trickled down in your child You nasty and hateful, that child gonna come here nasty and hateful. And he went, why he get that from me? He got it from you. But if you have a nice, kind disposition while carrying that child, that's why you need to be prayerful. Some of the shout hallelujah. You need to be prayerful so God can shape your attitude. 
Join the New Home family of churches along with the prophets, sons, and daughters from around the world in a celebration to remember as we honor Prophet Blakes and Lady Lois for 44 years of dedicated service to the kingdom. Starting Thursday, June 4th, a night of reflection with Pastor Robert C. Blakes Jr. and musical guest Nicole Slack-Jones. A night of praise with our musical guests, the Rocks of Harmony and the New Home Mass Choir. Morning Glory, Sunday with Pastor Samuel R. Blakes. And the culminating spotlight, a night of honor, Sunday evening with Pastor Dale Sanders. Mark your calendars for June 4th through the 7th, 2009 in New Orleans. Share in this glorious event as we honor God's prophet for his years of commitment to building the lives of others. Plan to be there for this 44th year celebration. For additional information, call the Media Center at 1-800-633-4274. Local callers, call the Prayer Center at 504-569-8206. Don't forget to attend the Day of Gratitude, Miracle Service, and a luncheon with the Prophet and First Lady in the beautiful Upper Room. Tickets are $30 per person. Saturday, June 6th at 9 a.m. immediately after the Miracle Service. Covenant Partners and Friends in Ministry, Thank you for your love and support to the ministry. Today's broadcast is available on CD or DVD. Order your copy today. Remember to ask about the Prophet's new catalog or log on to ProphetBlakes.com. Thank you for your love and support to the ministry. Robert C. Blake Senior Prayer Center. God's healing place for those who are ready to give up. Experience spirit-filled and anointed prayer partners as they minister biblical principles from God's Word. Call today. Prayer partners are available now. 504-569-8205 or log on to www.prophetblakes.com to submit your prayer request. Remember, your breakthrough is a phone call away. Become a covenant partner with Prophet Robert C. Blake Sr. Tap into the prophetic anointing upon his life by sowing a monthly seed of $25 or more. All faithful partners will receive a monthly special moments message prepared by Prophet Blakes. Also enjoy your personalized frame photo of the Prophet interceding for his faithful partners in ministry. Thank you for your sowing into the Prophet's life through your love and faithful support. The vision is unfolding as God uses Prophet Blakes to minister healing and deliverance to the nations. Thank you for tuning in to the Taking the Kingdom broadcast. Robert C. Blake Senior Ministries is supported by faithful covenant partners around the world. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher. station for smooth hits from the 80s, 90s, and today. 104.1 WDLT. Welcome to this week's edition of From the Pastor Study. Of course, I am Dr. Henry Roberts, your host and founding pastor of the Word of Life Community Church. One church, multiple locations to serve you and your entire family. I'm excited. Uh, all this week we've been celebrating uh, the 23 years of our church anniversary and, and monumental occasion. And I am so blessed uh, this week to have a, a group of pastors from throughout the Gulf Coast and, and locally to come and share in this meeting and many of them are a part of our international fellowship we call it the international fellowship of independent christian churches and ministry and i am so pleased to have each and every one of these men of god here today to share with us on from the pastor study i'm going to do this and let them introduce themselves to you uh following from my uh, my immediate right hand all the way over to that next corner god bless you pastor great to have you won't you tell people your name who you are and what's the name of your church and where you from 
Yes, uh, my name is Jermaine Gatz, and I'm the pastor of Faith Ministries, which is located in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, in the Homewood area. And we're just there ministering to the word, of, ministering to the people, the word of God, the word of faith, and uh, we're just excited to be on the broadcast today. Amen. God bless you. I am uh, Bishop Dr. Henry Williams from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. I am the proud pastor of the House of the Lord Spirit of Life Ministry. And uh, we are just about trying to build families, build relationships, and uh, to empower people so that they may become what God has called them to be from the teaching of God's Word. Yes, I am a pastor found the Resurrection Temple House of Prayer. I'm also supposed to be locked out of camp of Florida. Our mission in Tampa and all over the world is to seek out and save that which is lost through any means necessary. Minister to the whole man and in Jesus' name do it so. Hello, my name is uh, Bishop Lynn Morrison Jr. from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm the founding pastor of Word of Faith Christian Church. And the assignment from God is to teach his people faith. Amen. Amen. I am Pastor Harry Thomas from Fresh from Heaven Ministries in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where we are transforming spectators into participators in the kingdom of God. Our assignment is to teach the principles of God's word that can be lived out in everyday life. Well, praise the Lord. I'm Apostle David Kaiser, Jr., and I'm the founding pastor of Rightly Dividing the Word Church of God, located here in the beautiful city of Mobile, Alabama, where we are building a people of power, purpose, and praise. Amen. I, I invited these brothers here just to share a little bit about whatever God may be doing on their hearts and, and individual in their ministries in particular, and, and how your walk with God has really been a blessing in your life. I don't know where to start, uh, but it, it, it just, I guess I'll just start in the middle. Apostle uh, Lockett, won't you share with us uh, some of what God is doing in your life and, and the main focus and thrust of your ministry? God is doing some amazing things in my life. He's doing some amazing things in our ministry. Uh, he reached out and, and picked me up. I have the clay and put my feet on solid ground. And in doing so, he taught me to do that, the same thing for other men. We, we've been extensively in the prison ministry, jail ministry, sidewalk Sunday school services. And, and just outreach, we're, we're doing a, a, a mighty work in outreach. We're in the neighborhood, everywhere we need to be, everywhere where there's crime is, we try to be there. Everywhere where there's confusion, we try to be there. We do all that we can in Jesus' name. We totally in. We're not just halfway in. We're not trying to fight the enemy from outside of the rain. We are interested in getting in the rain, being a front line runner for the Lord. And he's done some amazing things. I, I saw him turn people's lives around from the prison system. I, I saw him reach out to young children and bring them up and turn their lives around and just minister to them to, to create ministry among our young people that one can go and tell another one about Christ. They, they can mentor one another. They seem to look out with one another extremely well. Big brothers seem to look out for little brother, little sister. We try to fill them up so they can go fill somebody up. So, you know, and I believe that's what God has assigned us to do. Now, now, how many years, I heard you mention you're going into prison. How many years you've been going in that prison? We, we've been going into prison right at about 20 years now. Wow. 20 years. Great. So a lot of times, when, when sometimes the guys get out of prison, do they come look for you and, and come to make sure and to let you know what, what a blessing you've been to them in their lives? Many, many times they do, uh, not necessarily always, because our main focus is not uh, building ourselves up. Our, our main focus is to be a Christ up. So I, I'm satisfied wherever they go, as long as they stay in Christ, as long as they stay in Christ, because they've got to be connected to the source. They've got to be connected to the power. If they're not connected to the vine, and there's no sap running through them, then I know eventually they're going to be right back where they came from, put on the foot of me. But as long as they're connected, they're going to be steady growing and multiplying. And that's what I miss you. Pastor Kaiser, won't you share with us some of the things God and the insight God's been giving you and what he's been doing over there in, in South Alabama? Of South Mobile County Mobile, down there. South Mobile, Alabama, amen. Well, listen, I really believe that God is moving. In fact, he is uh, in an awesome way uh, in our church and, and in that local community uh, there, amen. We do things such as, you know, prayer walks, 
uh, in the neighborhood. Uh, we go to those various uh, apartment complexes that are in that particular area and, and saw God move. We sent teams in there two by two. And in fact, we would pair a, a prophet with an evangelist. And they would go and they would knock out. Come on, man. Yeah, had a, had a pistol ready to do it at that particular time. And they was able to counsel with that young man and minister to him, you know, get them delivered, uh, get them saved, you know, and, uh, in, in the family of God, you know. And so, of course, in our personal ministry, you know, God is moving. Uh, <coughs> uh, the people there are being blessed, they're being taught the principles of God that, that lead to success. You know, I tell people a lot of times, you got to know what to do in order to be successful in this life, and that's both spiritually uh, and naturally. And so we are, we're doing that, I believe, in an effective way by the grace of God. Uh, Pastor Gasser, you know, yes, you're a young minister. Uh, uh, how old is your church, man? And, and tell us about, you know, what God's doing. Well, our church is about uh, five years old. We started in 2010. And uh, we're in a place right now where I believe we're just really uh, just getting started. For several years, uh, we were in the uh, West End area of Birmingham, Alabama. And we did various outreaches while we were there. We uh, ministered to the homeless. We did uh, back to school uh, giveaways. Uh, we did uh, giveaways where we uh, did outreach for uh, newlywed mothers where we gave out uh, pampers and diapers. And we did all kind of outreach uh, for a short period of time or of course of a few years. Uh, but then maybe a couple of years ago, God kind of redirected our focus from uh, not just doing outreach but also doing spiritual warfare mm. and uh, God blessed uh, me last year to be able to write a book on uh, spiritual warfare it's called tactics trends and traits of the enemy uh, equipping the believer to fight back and uh, of course you can find that on my website jermainegatson.com and also on our, our church website faithministriesinc.org uh, but last year God blessed us to move to uh, the Vulcan Parking Museum, wow. where the statue of Vulcan is that oversees uh, the city of Birmingham. Mm. And of course, you know, some people will kind of iffy about that. Why would you move, you know, your church uh, to that particular well, location? Dagon got to come down. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, we kind of lost a few people when we changed direction, but, but God kind of really focused our ministry on what he called us to do and so we spent the last year and a half on top of the mountain where the uh, Vulcan statue is praying and interceding uh, for the city of Birmingham and actually uh, this month God actually blessed us with a new building uh, in the Homewood area of Birmingham and so we're we're right there in Homewood right now and uh, we're working on the building so we're getting ready to have a, a dedication in a, a couple of months Bishop Roberts is going to come and do our dedication for us when he can get, in his, get his schedule Amen. clear and uh, so we're just excited about what God is doing we're in a new season uh, we just believe God is moving in a new way and we're just excited about it. Pastor Harry Thomas, yeah. tell us what's shaking in the back room. We're going to turn you loose in a minute, yeah. bitch. We're about to you ready to go. Yeah. Loose that man, let him go. Yeah. Come on, Pastor Thomas. Tell him. I seen yeah. him biting at the chump, so I had to jump the other way. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are, we are just seeing God do some tremendous, tremendous things. We've uh, kind of lately focused on Generation X. Uh, I think the enemy is focused on that 20 three to 35 year old age group yes. and uh, the college you might need kids. to break that thing yeah. down to 18. Yeah, we can go back to 18. Yeah. We've seen some of those too, the 18, yeah. 15. Uh, we're, we're really uh, having moves of God in our services where they are actually encountering the tangible presence of God, the prophetic apostolic presence of God. Uh, people are being healed, being delivered all manner of diseases are being healed uh, our Sunday services are basically revival services I mean kids are running to the church I can't wait to get to church we've talked to some of the parents of some of these generation X's that are my age or a little younger and uh, they said they've never heard their kids excited about church before and they're they're calling their college friends they're calling their business friends and uh, our main goal is to cause them or teach them how to impact their sphere of life, their marketplace ministry, their families. Uh, we're seeing uh, their family members getting saved. Uh, we're seeing their co-workers getting saved. 
Uh, in the process of all of this, we're seeing them get promoted. Prosperity is coming into their lives. Um, God is just being who he said he would be. Uh, you know, his kingdom is being manifest in their lives. And we're doing outreaches in the uh, neighborhoods, uh, going into apartment complexes, taking uh, trailers uh, with hot dogs and uh, free drinks. And right. we call it a prayer outreach. And we'll give them hot dogs, free drinks, and ask them if anybody needs prayer. And uh, we've had great turnouts with people coming out for prayer. Oh, Lord, burn up Hattiesburg over there. Amen. God bless you. He's, uh, he's doing a mighty work, and uh, we're just so pleased that God chose us. Um, amen. That uh, he would use us. I want to say to this pastor to be encouraged. Uh, one of the things that the word said, uh, you didn't lose nobody that he gave you. So for those that you lost, you know, they want you in anyway. So I want to encourage you. That's good. Amen. Let me tell you one of the things that we are doing. We, we're doing um, if I may, um, uh, a few things in uh, Hattiesburg, and we are equipping, encouraging, and uh, uh, getting people ready uh, to, um, uh, to go into this world. I, I think when we look now um, in a lot of areas, and I know particularly in Hattiesburg, uh, we have in our church now, uh, we have grandmothers that are 30 years old. Um, that, Just that, that may not mean anything, but it does to us in yes. terms of what we see. Because when we start looking at the grandmother being 30, this is a general statement. Yes. Um, I know in our Pacific area, but when we look at a 30-year-old grandmother and children that she's raising and uh, have never had God, because most of them that we evangelize, uh, we find that they have not had God, and not only just the mothers of the grandmothers, but the mothers as well that have never been churched, then uh, it becomes, uh, we understand that the work that God has given us in order to teach them, first of all, who God is. Uh, and that's first, and that's paramount to us in terms of the work that he has assigned us. And then when, he, uh, when we work with our people and bringing them to Christ, for them to accept Christ, we then go into a program that we have to, uh, to equip and, and to encourage them and to make sure that they are ready to go out into the world. We then concentrate on building families yes. and working together in building relationships. Mm -hmm. And so when we get into this area, that's when we begin to equip them. There are many things that we are doing. We're teaching them uh, how to run homes, how to have Christ in your homes and how that works together. Parenting skills. Parenting yes. skills wow. yes. that we are working with them and how to manage monies. Yes. How to do things like that so that it becomes worthwhile to them because you can bring them into church and give them Christ, but if they don't have anything when they leave, then, uh, then you're not going to have them that long. So we have to teach them. Uh, that's the only way that they are going to be empowered is that they need to be taught and so we have taken on the responsibility from the Lord that we would build these families and then we would teach them how to uh, build relationships. No, so we you have know, I don't want to cut you off. 24, 25 years ago, people told me people wouldn't be showing up to hear nobody just teach yeah. the and, word. And, and that's right. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, but I'm we, still here 23 years later. Yeah, that's exactly man. right. And I've been at it a little while myself now. So you better get you a hoop because yeah. ain't nobody coming over that here. No, and, that, and they don't want the hoop from me. <laughs> that's right. Uh, yeah. that's, that's for yeah. the younger guys. I don't, I don't do that anymore. I go and teach them. Yes. Yes. And, uh, and then that way they uh, they understand. I don't have anything to, against uh, the hooping. Yes, sir. I'm all for it. I'm just yeah. saying what, what I was told. Yeah. You mentioned that how in, the importance. Yes. Of teaching. Yes. I, I've always understood that teaching, it imparts. And that's right. See, preaching will inspire you. That's right. But that teaching is going to carry me. It's going to give me my how-to and, and the practical application that I need. So it's not like you said, I leave right. with something. Go ahead. Yes. I didn't well, mean to cut well, you off. And, and, but I like that because, you know, one of the things that we are teaching them is you don't live.